Alright uh, guys and welcome back to the channel where today you're joining me in a part exchange I've literally just taken in over the weekend. It is a Range Rover Evoque on a 2013 63 plate, so it's one of the very first shape Evokes that they brought out. And it has the 2.2 SD4, which is a four cylinder turbo diesel engine, producing around 190 horsepower, or it is 190 horsepower. And that's paired with the six speed gearbox. So I've sold quite a few Evokes and my other half actually drives one and, uh, and she loves it. It's, it's a lovely car with a lovely spec and this one's no exception. It does have quite a few of the goodies which we'll get into as we always do. Um, it's finished in the metallic Orkney grey with this black ebony grained leather. Um, so some of the extras that this one has, for example, is the keyless entry and the keyless start, which actually it sounds more of a gimmick, but it is really useful to have. Um, it's got the heated seats. It even has the dual view TV. So it's one of those scenarios where I can look at the satellite navigation uh, whilst the passenger can be watching TV and they actually have their own wireless headphones. So I can still stream audio and everything through uh, and they'll listen to the TV through the headphones. So that's quite a nice thing to have. It's got the memory package. So you've got electric heated memory seats in here as well. Has the usual bits like cruise control, Bluetooth. Also has this fixed panoramic sunroof, which is lovely, especially with the darker interior because it does let that much more light in. It's got 360 degree parking cameras and also the parallel park function too. And it also has these lovely upgraded 20 inch alloy wheels. They're actually the same alloy wheels that I have in my Range Rover Sport. Um, so I've got a, an L494 HSE Dynamic. Um, so it's obviously one of the options on that, although obviously mine are 22 inch whilst these are 20s. But all in all, the Range Rover Evoque is quite often referred to as a baby Range Rover. And I can see as to why, because of course it has Range Rover written everywhere. They use similar type systems and screens and, and aircon systems and things like that that they do across the model range. But it doesn't quite have the features that a full Range Rover would have. So is it really a true Range Rover? That's a question that I quite often ask myself. I think it's a good car. I don't think it's quite a good Range Rover and we'll kind of get through as to why. Um, but the creature comforts in this particular one are, are wherever you'd want them to be realistically. All your, your window switches are on the door card here. Has the electric powered tailgate so there's a button down here to open the tailgate. Um, lights and wipers relatively straightforward. The sat nav system, it actually is a really good system in these. They use them in the L494s, even though the Evoque actually started in 2012 and they brought it out with these screens, not so much the dual view ones, but with the, the premise of these screens, it always confused me as to why they didn't put them in the L322s, because of course they ran those up right up until 2000, and, well, late 2012, early 2013, and it had the older screen in, so it always confused me. But it is a good screen because of course you can stream your audio through on the Bluetooth, which was a big upgrade for them. The maps and everything are relatively easy to use. It's not the quickest screen, especially nowadays, but it certainly gets by. It's pretty intuitive and you know what it is that you're looking for. The heated seat, of course I've got the heated seat on. It's as much as it's nice and sunny, it is quite cold outside today. Um, so the heated seats are just on these two buttons here. And then you've got your dual climate controls. It also has the heated front windscreen, which of course a lot of the Range Rover lineup do. And it is really handy on those winter mornings because it does just get you going that much quicker um, when it defrosts and then you use your wiper and away it goes. In terms of a, ro a ride quality, again, I think it is good for a car. It's an SUV, so you do get a little bit of wind noise come through. And, uh, and this particular one has got matching Pirelli Scorpion tyres all around on those 20 inch alloys. So you do get a little bit of road noise, but certainly nothing, nothing too drastic. It's very, very comfortable. The, the seats have got a nice wide base to them and having the memory functions in this particular one is quite nice if you happen to share a car, because um, of course you just save it to, uh, to whichever one you wanted to do. But they are very comfortable and I do feel like I could do quite a lot of quite a lot of miles in these type of cars and in fact we do we, we sometimes take my other half to both if we're going out and uh, and it's a very comfortable drive certainly easier to park in certain situations than a big Range Rover Sport or an L405 or something like that um, but the reason I say it's not quite a true Range Rover is because my Range Rover just feels another step up another level up and it just feels that with the air suspension and things like that it, it's certainly a more capable car not to say that these, as I say, can't do the odd bits. You still have the terrain response on the buttons down here, but it doesn't have any of the adjustable suspension or anything like that. So it does make for a different drive, of course. 
In terms of a car though, it is a really pleasant place to be. Meridian sound system's definitely an upgrade that I would look for because the, uh, the standard system's a little bit subpar. They're not terrible, but the Meridian is a massive step up. Uh, the, the finish is all quite good. Bearing in mind, this one's done 93,000 miles and will be coming up to 10 years old this year in 2023. So obviously it's a 2013. It seems to have held up relatively well. There's, there's nothing that's worn away too much. All the buttons are still very visible and they haven't faded in any way. There's no rips in the bolster. You can feel that the leather is a nice thick leather that they've used. The door card is a little bit scratched and that does happen quite a lot within the, uh, the Evoque range. People catch their keys or rings or something like that on the leather here. This one's no exception. It does have a few spotty marks just there where it's just where it's caught the leather. Um, so maybe that would have been better to have a harder finish on, the, on whatever material they used on that there. But other than that, it does look to be in all good condition. There are a couple of scratch marks. I've just noticed literally a couple of scratch marks on the dashboard there. And again, that's because it's leather all the way through, which is lovely to have, but then it's also more prone to, to get the marks and bits and pieces. Um, but really a nice place to be, especially with that panoramic roof. It does let a lot of light in. And, uh, and I just feel like it is the baby Range Rover for sure. I think a lot of people would have it and say, oh, you know, I drive a Range Rover. And then when they say it's, it's a Vogue, they go, oh, okay, so it's a baby Range Rover. It's not, not a Range Rover Range Rover, which can be seen as a little bit harsh, maybe. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. But, um, but I think it is a great car, it's fair to say. I think it's a big improvement from the Freelander 2. I've sold a fair few of the Freelander 2s, and this certainly seems a bit more civilised. They use that same 2.2 SDV4. Uh, the SD4, not a V4, obviously, the SD4 engine in those, and the, the six-speed box on the pop-up dial is quite nice to have as well. Um, so it is definitely a great car. It's just whether it's a true Range Rover. I keep saying that, but it's, I, I'm a big Range Rover fan, you know, I really am, and, and I think it's a great alternative uh, as an SUV for a standard car, um, but I wouldn't give up my Range Rover for it, let's put it that way. Um, but all in all, goes quite well 190 horsepower certainly enough to move what is this car they are a little bit deceptive because people assume that it's a it's a quite a big car but it's not really it doesn't have a huge amount of boot space which i'll show you as well on that one there um, and it does you know it's comfortable for four people but i think three people in the back you get a little bit squished it's fair to say it does have the iso fix seat fitting so you can put kids seats and everything in there they're almost a little bit deceptive because you think you might actually get a bit more room in something like a ford focus which sounds really bizarre to say doesn't it because this is quite tall and everything like that but it's all quite compact and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you should just be aware of it. I have people that will come in and, and have a look at an Evoque because they think it would be a good family car for them. Um, they've got you know, a baby on the way and, and they try to put the push chair in the boot and it doesn't really work because if they do have a push chair that can fit in the boot, there's not much room for anything else. So um, it is a little bit deceptive. I don't think it's actually a very big car at all, um, but it does look smart. I think you know that there's not really so much a bad angle on the car. And I think it, um, it certainly has a presence on the road and, uh, and the lighting system's fantastic when you have these Xenon lights. So it is a very, very good car, um, but just deceptive in terms of the size. Uh, in terms of MPG, so as always, I'm on the country roads that I'm doing. Uh, so I'm averaging 32, uh, well, 31, let's call it, because it's 31.3. Um, so it's 31 miles a gallon, which isn't horrendous, um, but you'd almost expect a little bit better considering you don't get the size of the full Range Rover and everything like that, because my Range Rover does 32, 34 on a run. I've even had it up to 37 if it's a nice, easy going road. And, uh, and that is amazing, don't be wrong, that is driving very frugally and everything. Um, but you'd expect this not being such a big car and certainly not so heavy would, would do quite a bit more than that, but it doesn't uh, in terms of the MPG. Um, but all in all, very pleasant place to be. I'm always going to be a fan of the Range Rovers, and I'm really sorry. And, uh, and that's just the way it is with me, I'm afraid. So just winding up the little hill that I normally do, and, uh, and obviously it's all national speed limit and everything, and I don't go above that, but um, it's not amazingly powerful it has enough to to kind of get you going and everything but um but it doesn't doesn't surprise you in any way it doesn't 
shock you and think, oh my goodness, that's, that's a lot of power. Uh, obviously, it is an all-wheel drive being a Range Rover. They're not all all-wheel drive, though. They did do a um, what was called a pure model. Obviously, this is the dynamic one. They did do a pure model with a six-speed manual, and that was a front-wheel drive car. It's the only two-wheel drive that Range Rover do, um, certainly to my knowledge these days. Um, but it's, it's okay. You do feel it pull you along, um, but it's not going to set any records anytime soon, I don't think. Um, in terms of reliability, as I say, I've sold a fair few with these engine and gearbox setups. It all comes down to the maintenance. I say it on every single one of my videos, and, and I know it must sound like a broken record to some of you that do watch, but I think it is just ever so important to, to kind of bring that fact up. This one here, when it came into part exchange, I was relatively confident when I first saw it, only because it had the matching Pirelli Scorpion tires all around. And I think it always comes back to, if you're willing to spend that on the tires, then I would hope that you're willing to kind of keep the service history going through as well. This one's got a lovely service history. It's actually been serviced with Land Rover because you can access their online servicing relatively easy these days. And, uh, and all you need is the VIN number of the car. So you can go on to what they call osh.landrover.com and it brings up every time the vehicle's been in, as long as it's been recorded on the online system. I have had a couple where I've got invoices from Land Rover, but they've not uploaded it to the online system. But this one's been with Land Rover right up until 2020, and then a couple of independent since. It has also had, I've got an invoice for the front diff, and annoyingly, that is one of the common issues that go on a Range Rover Evoque, uh, either the front or the rear diffs, and it's the same on the Freelanders because they use that same running gear. Um, but this one's been done. I don't know why it is. I think they've, um, they've said it's a lifelong unit in terms of servicing. I think if you are going to buy one, it may well be fine. I have had them, or it hasn't had to be replaced, but I do sometimes service them, depending on the mileage and everything like that, to ensure that it is that little bit more cared for um, so it is a lovely car it's fair to say i wouldn't call it a true range rover i think a baby range rover is fitting because you still get some of the tricks and the goodies and it still looks like car and everything like that i just wouldn't call it a proper range rover i may well be wrong you may hate me for that comment or uh, or you may well agree with me um, but please do check out any of my other videos as i say i've had a fair few range rovers on the channel uh, l494 l320 l405 and then many other brands as well um, so please do like and subscribe to the channel and please do give the video a thumbs up and leave any questions you have and i'll be looking forward to, uh, to answering you thanks very much